Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the News at 10, live on Channel's television, Lagos. A quick reminder of our top stories now. Christian community in Yobe State hold peaceful procession to call government's attention to security situation across the country and Leah's continuous stay in captivity two years after her kidnap. Senate moves to establish commission against proliferation of small arms and light weapons in the wake of rising insecurity across the country. Ousted by Yeltsin State Governor-elect David Leon breaks silence, dissociates himself from violent attacks, trailing Supreme Court verdicts which nullified his election. And Britain moves to end what it calls cheap labour from Europe, announces priority access for highly skilled workers from around the world. That's a fallout of Brexit. Plus, business, sports and news from Abuja, the FCT, and later, international news from our London studios. Our website, ChannelsTV.com, has more information on our top stories and others. Subscribe and watch Channels Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser. Or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. You can also watch us via your smart TV platforms on Apple, Android, Fire and Roku TV. Lagos State today recorded its first case of Lassa fever this year. The State Commissioner for Health, Professor Akin Abayomi, says that the patient is currently in isolation at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Lat Luth, while 63 other suspected contacts are currently being monitored. Professor Abayomi explains that the situation is under control and he is asking residents to be calm. So far this year, over 470 Lassa fever cases have been confirmed in 27 states, with 103 deaths recorded across the country. As of the 17th, we had a situation where a young student um, entered Lagos from a Bonnie state. He had been unwell before he came. He had been treated in some form or fashion. He came into Lagos. His destination was Lagos Law School, where he was quickly attended to by the Lagos Law School Clinic. They also tried to treat him for the common malaria and things like that. He wasn't getting better. He was referred to the Nigerian Air Force Clinic in Oniko, where he was managed further. There was still no improvement. And then he was referred to the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, where we started to suspect that this, based on his point of origin and his non-response to standard treatment for malaria or typhoid, that we may be dealing with Lassa fever. In our interrogation, there was no obvious contact with anybody prior to his arrival in Lagos. But the test was confirmed as positive on the 17th of this month. And he was then immediately transferred to the isolation containment facilities within the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, where he remains today. Watching the news at 10 on channels television, reaching you live from Lagos. Let's cross over to our Buja studios now, where Linda Kigbe is standing by to take us through a couple of more stories. Linda. Hello, Gimba. Good to see you and welcome to Abuja. The family of a young man, Toju Debo, who reportedly jumped into the Lagos Lagoon, is asking for a full investigation into the alleged suicide of their son, and they say there has not been any form of communication with them by security agencies since the incident was reported. The mother of the victim told Channels Television that the family is distraught with the allegation of suicide, since all they know for now is what was reported in the social media. Our correspondent, Kayla Megwa, reports. 22-year-old Toju Daibo had just finished his final year exams after studying quantity surveying at the University of Lagos. Unconfirmed reports say on the 15th of February 2020, he left the Magodo Specialist Hospital in an Uber 
and while on Third Mainland Bridge, he had complained of an upset stomach. The Uber driver stopped the car, the boy climbed over the bars and threw himself into the lagoon. His family lives in Abuja, and his mother says when he's not on campus, he will stay with relatives, Tina Brown and her brother Yemi Brown, in Bagada, Lagos State. So where is Toju? His mother, Mrs. Kemi Daibo, says her son had been beaten up by one of his hosts at least twice, including the day of the alleged suicide. When he got back to Bagada, but they saw, they saw him at, um, in front of the hospital. Because yeah, I learned that the story I learned. Yes, because well, I learned that he was beaten. That the guy beat him up. Again? Or? Yes, again. When he went to pack his things. He was beaten up again. By that same and boy. they broke his head. My. They inflicted injuries on him. Even if he's the one, where is the body? Mrs. Daibo does not believe her son is dead, and neither do his sisters, since nobody has been found yet. The body has not been found. Uh, if there is anybody at all. So where is Toju? People are just keeping quiet. Nobody is saying anything. As if he doesn't have people unidentified. No. Somebody, somebody rescued him. But they are, they are taking him. They will bring him out. Ah! What did they do to him? I don't know. What did they do, they do? What did they do to him? Why did they wear the clothes? Why did they beat him up? More distressing for the family is the fact that there has been no communication from security operatives to the family since the incident was reported. Has there been any investigation? Has, has police communicated with you? Has anything? Not here whatsoever. There hasn't been an actual statement even from the police stating this is what we investigated and this is what we've done. No, none that I know of. None. <laughs> They're calling for a thorough investigation into the incident. You have never said they were heading towards Ireland. Then he said he had a, a stomach upset, he wanted to ease himself on the third mainland bridge. A reasonable driver should not even stop there with the news we've been hearing about that place. You never took any drugs. This case has brought up so many questions. How are the search efforts going? If Toju's flight back to Abuja was on the same day the alleged suicide happened, why was he headed to the island when the Magodo Hospital and the airport are on the mainland? Also, why has there been no formal communication to his family from security operatives? The family is still searching for answers to these and more questions so they can have some closure on this incident. Kayla Magua, Channels Television News. To legal matters, the Federal High Court in Abuja today fixed March the 25th for hearing on the one billion naira fundamental rights enforcement suit filed by activist and publisher of Sahara Reporters Omoyele Shore and Olawale Bakari over the alleged illegal detention prior to their release in December 2019. Mr. Shore and his partner are being prosecuted by the federal government over alleged treasonable felony. At the resumed hearing of the fundamental rights enforcement suit today, Justice Nyangeku granted the applications for the regularization of some processes filed out, by, filed out of time by the parties. Shore and Bakare, who were detained in the custody of the DSS from August to December 2019, are demanding 500 million naira damages each in their separate suits. The applicants also want the courts to declare that their arrest without warrant of arrest is illegal, as they claim it violates their fundamental rights to personal liberty. Another relief seems to have come the way of former National Security Advisor Sambo Dasuki today as an Abuja High Court ordered the release of his international passport about two months after he was released on bail. The court ordered the Registrar of the Court to release a document through his counsel, Ahmed Raji S.A.N., to enable him to carry out renewal of a document which expired since it was taken by the court. The order will also enable the former NSA to obtain a visa for a specialized medical consultation abroad. The former National Security Advisor, along with four others, are standing trial before the court for alleged breach of trust and money laundering. He was in custody for four years before his bail was granted in December 2019. 
Now to the National Assembly. The House of Representatives today kicked against the new policy of the Petroleum Technology Development Fund that students who intend to apply for its scholarship programs must possess a national identification number. They, however, want the PTDF to accept the local government certificate as it means as means of identification as a question the, the National Identity Management Commission over the inability to register more people. Our correspondent Terry Ikumi reports. Law students Once again in the Green Chamber, the national identification number is a topic for debate. If you don't have name, you cannot write jam. For lawmakers who had last year opposed the use of the national identification number for jam registration, questioned the new policy of the Petroleum Technology Development Fund, PTDF, that masters and PhD scholarship applicants must possess the national identification number. Worry that most Nigerians are yet to obtain the need due to no fault of theirs, and therefore it will be unconscionable to visit the scenes of the national identity cards management commission on innocent Nigerians of Africa as this is a failure on the part of government. Within the time, which is two weeks or less than two weeks, where they have recommended that our people must have names number, that PTDF should, as a matter of urgency, suspend that provision. The capacity of the National Identity Management Commission to effectively register the estimated 200 million Nigerians is questioned. We should investigate why up to today as we sit down here that people are not getting their national ID card. Even when they provide themselves to the place to say, register me. We know that those who for the cards have not been doing their best. We've been providing funds. What is the problem? While some say it is a Nigerian thing to wait for last-minute rush, others blame the situation on lack of harmonized data. Most of the time it is on the day that they said they are going to close registration. That's when you find our people rushing out. And then we begin to ask for extension. My suggestion is that government should put in place an integrated um, um, program for all the agencies responsible with the collection of data. But if it is the fault of government or bureaucracy that is virtually almost impossible to get a card, I don't think we should visit that sin on the citizen. This are the, that's what we need to consider. Whose fault is it? Where, where, wherein lies the fault? Part of the resolutions of the House is for the PTDF to accept other forms of identification, like the local government certificate, even though some Nigerians say it is questionable, considering the ease with which